it is difficult to formulate a complete list of qualities for which the Freelander 2 is respected. Well, an SUV, albeit with independent suspension. Well, two powerful subframes, although it's not hardware that is responsible for the all-wheel drive here, but only the Haldex clutch of an advanced, albeit fourth, generation. Soundproofing is not very good, but driving a car is tasty and honorable. Land Rover after all. In general, this car has a lot of talent. And as it turned out, there are much more of them than possible problems. But the most important thing is that a person can buy this car during his lifetime, without having a million hryvnias in his pocket. Alas, the current prices for new Land Rovers are depressing. The body is welded from real British steel, against which any corrosion will break teeth. In addition, some parts are galvanized. Fitting parts is what you need, however, the body electrics are weakly resistant to dampness. Moisture ruthlessly sneaks up on all kinds of motors, penetrates into the optics, under the hatch, and sometimes even hides in the trunk. To heavily criticize the two diesel, 150 and 190 horsepower, and 240 horsepower gasoline engine, you need to be a complete nihilist. Most Frillovs are equipped with a 2.2 liter DW12 turbo diesel. When looking for a car, you should not huddle in money and guess an older model year. Many of the early shortcomings were successfully fixed later, as well as in the course of revocable campaigns and under warranty. For example, the problem with the fragility of injectors, UAH 4700 per piece, has been solved. Now they go 150,000 kilometers or more. The fuel pump did not shine with reliability in early cars. Do not disdain, look into the service book, perhaps the available chronicle of warranty replacements will please you. Two six-speed transmissions, mechanics, and automatic, most likely, will not cause any trouble if the previous owner was not distinguished by exploits in 4x4 clubs. An automatic is even preferable, since it is noticeably more economical when paired with a diesel engine. In addition, it is easier to drive off-road with a machine gun. It cleverly compensates for the lack of traction on the bottoms. We have not heard of problems with overheating of the electromagnetic clutch responsible for all-wheel drive. And terrain response, an electronic off-road assistant, is sinful except for the abuse of the brake system on all the same off-road. No more. So, if you intend to settle in the heart of the Grim Pen Bog, prepare a set of brake pads for every 5,000 kilometers. If you do not intend to turn into a swamp Kikimora, the durability of many knots will surprise you. Suspension is built traditionally, McPherson strut front and multi-link rear. Up to 60,000 kilometers runs like clockwork strong and comfortable, perhaps only too noisy on the road, then it all depends on driving habits. That is, from the owner's love for unpaved roads. The stabilizer struts are the first to be surrendered. Next, the lower arms at the rear and the shock absorber struts at the front will ask for attention, can be requested to retire and strut bearings and external steering tips. However, once you put the suspension in order, you cannot be afraid of it for the next couple of years significant costs will be justified. By the way, shock absorbers prove to be the most tenacious in this company. 150,000 kilometers of run is not the limit. The apparent modesty of the interior is somewhat deceptive. Behind the wheel thoroughly, although the driver's seat may be without vertical adjustment. But the devices and buttons seem dumpy, real. And if you put up with the electronic bugs that pop up every now and then, it's quite possible to enjoy Victorian practicality and elegance. Frankly, passengers in the back row are unlikely to be able to boast of an excess of space and freedom of movement. Summing up, it can be argued that the early pre-styling models, while retaining all their driving qualities, may eventually require serious investments. But after the modernization of 2010, and especially 2012, the crossover has significantly increased in reliability. You can safely take it and not be afraid of anything, unless, of course, cost of about 700,000 hryvnia for a car in good condition does not scare you away. Body. It happens that due to the penetration of moisture and dirt, the rear wiper motor jams. Due to weak seals, the brake light, trunk and sunroof are leaking. True, all this on machines until 2008. Electrician malfunctions include a tail light that melts near the bulbs. Transmission. Over time, twitching and slipping may appear. Again, in cars from the first batches. These boxes were replaced under warranty. However, not all cars could fall under the 2008 service company. This is worth considering. In general, 
the automatic transmission is strong and can withstand up to 250,000 kilometers without major repairs. Engine. The engines do not have any incurable congenital ailments. Diesel injectors do not like abrasive and low-quality fuel and additives. Let's say a turbine here can be changed for 20,500 UAH. This is for a new production Garrett, restored half the price. With runs under 200,000 kilometers, increased oil consumption is considered the norm rather than the exception, and does not always indicate the imminent death of the compressor. Steering. Usually, after about 160,000 kilometers of run, a hum appears in the area of backslash U 200B backslash U 200B power steering. It's the power steering pump. It's easy to get rid of it. You just need to change the fluid every 60,000 kilometers and the plastic power steering reservoir itself along with the filter. So long. Well made, crickets are a rarity. The leather on the steering wheel goes bald over time. The pads on the central pillars wear out with seat belts. From corrosion, the electric locks for opening not only the tailgate, but also the rest of the saloon doors.